groups. Let's create ourselves a database, but I want to add a new resource group for this. And I'll call this resource group name Rink Me. And uh, well, I'm living in Europe and I usually host everything in, in Europe somewhere. Uh, let's do West Europe, that should do it. I don't want to add any tags right now, so review and create and create. So what we will need right now is just a database. Where is this? So let's add a new service. Okay. But why don't I find this? Azure SQL, that should be it. Create and manage SQL Server resources from a single view. I guess that should be the right one. Okay, so here I have to choose between the normal database managed instance or virtual machine. And I just want to have the database. Here I can, I can also choose if I want to put or to use an uh, Is everything okay with the sound? Can you still hear me? Please, please let me know in the chat if you can still hear me. Because I had a small interruption here with, with my audio and I'm not sure if everything is okay again. Um, however, I'll choose the single database for now. I don't want uh, to use an uh, elastic pole because I just want to have one database. And of course, since this is everything only, uh, let's say, dummy project, side project like that, uh, so it's not that I'm earning money with it, I just uh, make it as, uh, as resourceful as possible. So database name, let's call that uh, RinkMe, and the SQL server, I'll have to create a new SQL server. something like that your server name can contain only lowercase okay rink me sql01 that should do it let's type in a password for the admin and it should be also in Europe somewhere. Okay. Where to Europe, North Europe? Uh, I'm looking for West Europe. That should do it. Okay. Server admin login. Okay. Sorry, I missed that. Let's give an admin. So that would be my admin name. So this is the server that we created. Uh, I don't want to use an elastic pool. Then uh, I have to choose a plan, I guess. Um, let me let me see. Okay. So here there is this max size of 31, 32 gigs, oh, which should be fine, I guess. But this estimated cost per month is uh, actually not what. Uh, that's that's way too high. So let me see if I can get this maybe standard. And the standard works based on DTUs, data transfer units. Um, database disk size, uh, this is 250 uh, 
gigs and this is just 12.65 euros and for DTUs I guess I have 10 DTUs yeah um, 10 DTUs is I guess enough for what we need right now uh, maybe we can get 20 DTUs to, to make sure that uh, well we have all the resources that we need when we need them and that's 25 euros well, let's leave it on 10 DTUs because we won't have so many requests I guess and if we will have then we can come back here and reconfigure this um, of course, since we, we are on the standard and we are not using an elastic pull on Azure, we cannot configure uh, auto scaling at all. But 12 euros for this, I guess that that would be that would be okay. Now, uh, which would be per month. Uh, so yeah, let's let's apply that. Uh, networking. Okay, connectivity method. Uh, hmm. Connectivity to your server via public endpoint or private point. Uh, choosing no access creates the defaults, and you can configure connection method after server creation. Okay, let's um, let's do it that way. Okay, the collation and things like that. Uh, data source. Yeah, I want to have a, a blank database. That's for sure. And I guess for the collation, I will leave this uh, this default that we have here. Azure Defender, uh, not now. So they just want to keep it as um, as cheap as possible, and uh, yeah, that should uh, that should do it. So let's uh, let's create it. And we have to we have to wait a little until this gets created, because there are some things that that we want to do when after uh, this SQL is created okay and um, there are some things that I still need to configure uh, when the, the SQL database is created because I have to make sure that I'm that I'm able to connect to the database uh, even when I'm working locally uh, so from uh, my current machine so let's go to the resource and here we are uh, as resource on the SQL server uh, where of course we can create or we can uh, configure this this SQL database uh, with a lot of other security stuff and, and important things like that but what I really want to do is let's go back to the resource groups uh, to ring me and I want to go to the server itself and for the server there should be here somewhere um, the configure firewall rules where is it or is that on the database hmm I guess I'm missing that let's um let's go on the database in this case yes set uh, server firewall what I want to do here in this set server firewall uh, is add a client IP uh, because I want to add the the external IP of, of my current client so that I'm able to connect to the database when I'm running the application locally so when the application doesn't uh, run actually in uh, in an Azure web app so uh, question from IP specific below provides access to the database okay and this is exactly what I want to do and here I have this button add client IP which automatically adds this client IP right now uh, to the database. So after I save this, I will be able to connect to, to this database uh, from my local computer. Now, of course, this is a very, very easy setting and in production environments, it would be configured a little bit different, maybe through VNets and you have to connect through a VPN on things similar like that. But for now, I guess that uh, uh, that will do it. Uh, everything should be fine here so let's close this and then one other thing that we need to do is connect with and uh, I want to connect with Visual Studio but I don't want to open in Visual Studio right now I would have expected uh, that they would give me the connection string to it 
I don't want to open Visual Studio. Um, let's see what we have here. Power apps, uh, configure, replication, connection strings. So yeah, that uh, that should be it. And here we have ADO.net. Um, and um, yeah, I'll I'll put this in a in a Notepad file. But I'm I'm going to to use this on a different screen uh, because here I will have to to use my my username and the password. And I'm I really don't want this to be shown on uh, on the stream. So let's. Uh, Yeah, that should be it. Yeah, that, uh, that that should be so. Right now we have a running database, and theoretically we can connect to it uh, from uh, or from my local machine right now, probably or surely using Visual Studio. And the way that that's gonna work, we can go back to Visual Studio and in app settings to JSON. Uh, let me add here a property. It will be named connection strings, and uh, yeah, let's let's create an object for that because we might want to add different connection strings later. Uh, so the first one, let's call it the default, which is the first one, and here we'll just add that connection string that we copied. Just one second to make sure I can copy it. That should do it, I guess. There's only one thing that I have to make sure is... Uh, no, there's... There's no backslashes here, so... Yeah, that, uh, that should do it. So let's close this app settings to JSON file. And we'll go later and, uh, and see how we can uh, add this connection string basically to our app.